So I was going to ask you, if you were 21 today, what would you be like? What would 21-year-old Balaji today, let's say you don't have the tracker, you don't have the name, and you don't have the funds to be investing and uh, you know having a big platform to speak on just, just yet, what would 21-year-old you be focused on? How would you be spending your time? Um, so what would I do? Uh, first, skills-wise, I'd get really good at computer science and statistics uh, first. And the reason is that every domain – has algorithms and data structures, which means that computer science and stats are valuable anywhere. You can walk into Walmart and you start writing down code for uh, shopping carts and you know baskets and pricing and so on. You can walk into American Airlines and do that for you know flight scheduling. You could walk into Pfizer and start writing about VATs, you know, for drug preparation and, and you know like a pharmaceutical manufacturing, right? Um, Reaction connects all that type of stuff, and of course, each of these areas will have domain knowledge, you know. But computer science and statistics are a universal language, and I mean CS and stats. I don't mean just like learning programming and uh, you know how to invoke library calls. I mean actually understanding the concepts and really wrestling with them. Okay, um, and the reason is it's sort of like uh, what physics was to the early 20th century, CS and stats is to this century because. Physics was awesome for, you know, understanding the natural world. All these physicists could, you know, in the heyday of physics, go and kick in the doors of any discipline and be like, ha, I'm going to write down some equations and just change your life, you know, because you're doing this in a phenomenological way and and we can do it way better. Um, and uh, now, today, because so much of the world is a constructed virtual world, you know, because we're interacting with it on screens, you know, something like cryptocurrency is a constructed virtual world. Right? Social networks are constructed virtual worlds, so are video games. CS and stats becomes, I mean, it was valuable before, but it's even more valuable today. So that's a foundational kind of thing. And um, then, you know, in terms of domains to get good at, uh, I would find something, you know, it sounds funny to put it this way, but like an area that you really care about for some reason, you know, and there's, but but that's also a line, you know, the Ikigai concept? You guys, mm-hmm. yeah. right? So like the four things, I've, I may not remember them fully, but it's like what you're good at, what the world needs, uh, what you can make money at, um, and, uh, what, and what you have fun what doing. You and what you have fun what, doing. That's right. Exactly. Yeah. That's right. So the Ikigai concept, finding what that is. So you, after you build that base of skills, right, um, with CS and stats, by the way, you can understand finance because it's crypto. It will all become crypto. You can understand genomics because the ACs, Gs, and Ts on screen. You essentially have a theoretical, like, foundation in any area you walk into and then from that other concepts can be layered on top if that makes any sense right so i mean it's like a general purpose computer it's a general purpose set of 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 principles so his point being that these ideas float around the air and people are running on scripts that they don't even realize they're running on because media scripts humans just as code scripts machines right this is something i had in the ferris podcast right so Tech could sort unpack, of abandon. Un- unpack that for a second for somebody who doesn't get it real right off the top. You know, sure. saying, you know, just the way that you know, uh, what is a script in the way that the media scripts humans? Um, masks work. Masks don't work. Um, okay, boomer. Um, every meme, right? Uh, for example, okay, you, you see a bunch of kids when they or the, come, or the the Karen thing. Yeah, the Karen thing. You know, you see a bunch of kids when they come out of a movie theater. What is the first thing they do? I haven't seen kids come out of a movie theater. I don't know. <laughs> okay. A bunch of kids come out of a movie theater. The first thing they do is they start quoting lines from the movie, right? They yeah. just reenact what they just saw on screen, right? Right. And so, you know, this is something where the way to get people to do something, sometimes it is to tell them to do it, but often it is just show it being done, right? And that is kind of, you know, Peter Thiel's, you know, uh, citation of Rene Girard on mimesis, I think is important. Like, humans are mimetic. That's how we acquire language. That's how we align on objectives, you know. Well, it's interesting because this is one of the things that Mandelbrot talks about in Misbehavior of Markets, is that a human's ability to use their perception to gauge what, like, a graph looks like, this is where humans are really good. And Nassim Taleb was very influenced by that book. If you look at his citations throughout the Incerto, he's always citing Mandelbrot. A couple weeks ago, he went on Twitter, and it was sort of like a a riddle of different numbers, and which one is more likely just with statistics. And Taleb said, this is something that you want to eyeball. And so there's a certain class of, we could call them eyeball problems, which computers are way worse at solving than humans. And then we could get Tinder for cancer for those. Yeah, it's interesting, though, because... 
once you can teach a machine to do something, it'll usually do it better than a human. Uh, for yeah. example, what's it's made legible? So, yeah, exactly. Right. Like so. So, for example, chess, right, or go, right. It is non-trivial to teach them those eyeball problems. Very non-trivial. You often have to, you know, think very deeply about what a human is actually doing. You extract the training information. It's you know, there's there's various techniques, right. But once you do, it's it surpasses. It's kind of like with flight. There's aspects of we, we don't yet understand how agile the bumblebee is or how it can fly, how it does. At least that's apocryphal, aero astro, evidently. We don't fully understand it. And there's aspects of like how birds are really agile that we haven't yet been able to figure out. But we have been able to make machines that fly faster and higher than any animal that we know of. So basically, there is something to the idea that once we can put it into the machine format, we can exceed. And uh, it's just non-trivial to do that. I mean, brain machine interface is another great example of this. Like, you just turn it into something where you can read signals from the brain, and you're like, okay, well, that's what an A is encoded as. Boom! You can think. Have you seen these? Like, there's devices now where you can think and type. It's telepathy. It's pretty awesome, actually. 